Good afternoon. It is Sunday, July 14th, mid-July Mamish, the hottest month of the year, the middle part of the month, and the weather map reflects this big time, especially on the East Coast, headed into New Jersey, Baltimore, Maryland, New York City. The next couple of days, re- extreme heat forecasted. We have excessive heat watch in effect through Tuesday. That might be extended through Wednesday for many of these East Coast cities with a heat advisory in effect currently as we speak. We also have excessive heat occurring in the Midwest, especially Omaha, Nebraska, where an excessive heat warning is in effect. Dew points are forecasted to go into the upper 70s along the Midwest Corn Belt. The Midwest Corn Belt is going to be the highest dew point area in this country for today, uh, where we have the wet bulb temperatures also going into the 80s over there. A few locations down in Florida and some other scattered areas may see wet bulb temperatures of that magnitude, according to the European computer model. Uh, When you head off to the desert southwest, we have some excessive heat warnings which remain in effect over there. But the ridge has largely moved to the east. The heat has expanded eastward, so not quite as intense heat for areas like Phoenix, Arizona. But when you go up into the northwest Pacific, when you go east of the Cascades, we have temperatures going up into the hundreds today. And Denver, Colorado has an unusual heat wave over there. Today's day number three of record-breaking heat. Temperatures expected to go into the lower or mid-hundreds. The only thing is, however... And this really applies to many locations as well in the Midwest, is that we have these thunderstorms, which are not really 100% forecastable, but they've been popping up and they've been pushing those temperatures down. This has been the case in Nebraska, a line of thunderstorms, in fact, possibly even a Dureco pushed through the area earlier today and may develop later on today. That's uh, This is, in effect, affecting Denver, Colorado as well, so temperatures might not be as hot as what was originally forecasted. Nonetheless, still a record high is forecasted. The previous record of 101 back in 1878, I have more confidence about the 1878 than the 101, but that's expected to be beaten or at least tied for this afternoon. Originally forecasted to be beaten by several degrees at this point, possibly only one degree, and you would have to stay up to date with the National Weather Service over there in Denver to hear the latest regarding that. We also have dry lightning storms moving across Colorado. Nothing could be a higher fire weather risk than dry thunderstorms with lightning coming down. Uh, That's brutal stuff for fires, weather, safety. When you go up into Canada, we have extreme heat warnings, which are in effect for portions of the Arctic coast again. Unbelievable. The Arctic coast, the, the actual coast of the Arctic, we have extreme heat warnings for temperatures going into the mid 80s. These heat warnings are in effect in, issued by Environmental Canada. We just had a new one about within 30 minutes ago issued for that area. You could use the Storm Shield app and get a comprehensive view of exactly where these places are, and you'll see it's exactly on the Arctic coast, all the way up in northern Canada for temperatures in the mid 80s. Uh, you probably is important to point out that the heat over there is not super dangerously high, but it's in the mid 80s and it is something which could be significant, could be dangerous to those people that are not used to it and don't know how to manage, uh, you know, t- hot temperatures in the mid 80s. All of us know that when you play sports in mid 80s, it feels hot. So you go up there, these are temperatures which are in the upper edge of room temperature or even higher than that. Uh, you know, room temperature 60, uh, 6, 67, no, 68 to 77 degrees. Some say 59 to 86 degrees. So we're dealing with that. But with the sunshine, temperatures go feel significantly warmer. So you have temperatures in the mid-80s over there. The excessive heat in the United States is genuine excessive heat, especially when you go into Omaha, Nebraska, anywhere within the Midwest Corn Belt. The Chicago area seems to be escaping the most dangerous heat, and the heat advisories remain to our west. They don't come into Chicago, but it's hot in Chicago nonetheless and humid. 
you know, 90 degree heat is a good possibility in Chicago for today. When you head down into St. Louis, it's just classic stuff, but they're a little bit higher than classic. We have heat advisories for that area as well. The 100 degree heat, the there's 100 degree heat, which will be common across the East Coast this week at some point between now and Tuesday. Uh, and you know, the hundreds we have in going back just a second to Omaha, Nebraska, we have a front that's going to be approaching that area for tomorrow, right before the front moves through in general, right before fronts move through, you have compressional warming along with an increase in moisture. So what you have is when the front approaches the city in the afternoon, parts of that city are going to see significantly cooler and drier weather, but the other part sees an increase in heat and humidity. So if you don't have the front forecast, if that forecast is not 100% accurate, there are times where the forecast could be a bust for some locations. But in general, looking at the general heat wave, it's going to intensify for some locations for tomorrow as that front approaches the area. For the East Coast, the heat intensifies peak heating occurring on Tuesday. The New York City National Weather Service has pointed out that the dew points might be lower on Tuesday, and that might be responsible for bringing up the temperatures. Baltimore National Weather Service has mentioned some interesting things. It's interesting to people who are somewhat familiar with the Bermuda High, but not 100% familiar with the Bermuda High. So Bermuda High pressure is a common term when you hear the regional weather synopsis during heat waves on the East Coast, especially Baltimore for some reason. You'll hear either the location of the Bermuda High. It is responsible for pushing the south flow of hot and humid air into the region. But at the same time, the location is crucial. Uh, right now, actually, dew points are expected to be a little bit lower in Baltimore due to the strong Bermuda high. Humid, nonetheless, dew, hum, humid nonetheless, and it's also responsible for the humidity as well. So dew points upper 60s to low 70s for the Baltimore area. That's what the National Weather Service is reporting, pushing those temperatures into the 90s. If the dew points should get lower, as they might in a couple of days, we might see an increase in those temperatures, probably at 100 degrees or so. This will likely be the hottest uh uh, the hottest episode of heat so far this summer. But there is an area which is receiving for sure the hottest temperatures so far this summer, and it slips my mind where that is. It could be that it is Baltimore, actually. Cities like Knoxville, Tennessee will be flirting with record heat. There's areas in North Carolina as well flirting with record heat today. But if you really want to know where is it the absolute hottest in the entire world, for real, which area does it feel the hottest? It's absolute torture right now in some of the coastal cities of the United Arab Emirates. This is nothing unique to them, but it doesn't. Al- they don't always have a super, super humid heat. Sometimes it gets dry. In fact, even now, sometimes it could just suddenly get dry and temperatures can go into the 100 teens. But a lot of the time right now, it's super humid. Dew points in the mid 80s with temperatures in the upper 90s. And at times, temperatures, when they go into the hundreds, there are times where the dew points remain in the 80s, even as temperatures go into the hundreds. Very similar to what was going on earlier this season in Brownsville, Texas, Corpus Christi, Texas, actually even more so, Kingsville, Texas, that whole area, and what was going on over there last summer, which was really unique. That Last summer, we actually had higher temperatures. It, higher sea surface temperatures were higher. In many cases, they were higher in the Gulf of Mexico than the Persian Gulf. That was last summer, and That, in the beginning of this summer, the dew points reflected a situation like that. Something interesting to note is that the water temperatures have cooled down across the Gulf of Mexico and across parts of the Atlantic Ocean. That's due to Hurricane Barrel. It's also, some meteorologists claim it's due to the Sahara dust that's getting going over a large part of the Atlantic. Less radiation is coming through the sun. That's something that is unique. uh, That explanation to it is uh, something that I generally don't hear. Uh, But if the dust concentration is really high, that would make sense. I don't know what the dust concentration is. However, 
there are people who might be wondering, well, if the temperatures have dropped significantly across the Gulf of Mexico, temperature, water temperatures in many locations by the Caribbean, mid 80s right now, although I did see some upper 80s, nothing compared to what we had last summer where we had Everglade National Park, 101 degrees upper. Well, you have those water temperatures drop. Does that decrease the hurricane risk? So what you have to realize is that one of the things that's the concerns about the Gulf of Mexico is not just the surface water temperatures, but it's the great depth that the, the warm water continues. So when the hurricane forms, a storm forms, all of that ro- quick rising air that occurs in these stronger storms call, causes upwelling in the ocean. It brings, usually brings forth cooler water from the bottom of the ocean to the surface. But in the Gulf of Mexico, there are areas over there where the water is warm at depth. And it's specifically those areas. It's the same area every single summer, basically, where it's that area. It's a little, I don't know how many hundreds of miles, let's say, off the Mexican coast. It's a certain area in the western part of the Gulf. When these storms track over that area, they totally, they explode. So it's that area. We have other areas of really warm water at depth. So even though the surface water temperatures are closer to normal right now, you know, they say it's still above normal. Normal. I would have to see what normal is because you, you have water temperatures in the mid and some upper 80s. It doesn't seem like it's that far above normal than what we would see normally in July. So we have seen a drop in water temperatures. Uh, but nonetheless, it's the depth of that water temperature. Also realize, not even if water temperatures were cooler than normal, it's still warm enough for hurricanes to form. Where, uh, for many, many years, the National Weather Service would say that it's necessary to have 80 degree water temperatures, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, in order for hurricanes to form. AccuWeather has lowered that to 77 degrees and realize there have been rare occasions where hurricanes have occurred less than that. We just went through powerhouse hurricane category 5 barrel, which at one point was 165 mile per hour sustained winds. It's something that, although there's been plenty focus on it it, here in the United States because it covered a large area, but there are parts of it that I think many people may have missed, just the rapid intensity. That was a record, especially for the month of July. There's never been a hurricane that's intensified with that quickness in the month of July ever in the Atlantic Ocean. There's never been a hurricane that strong that far down south. We've never had a Category 4 hurricane that far down south in the month of July. And this hurricane actually reached Category 5. The thing weakened, but then right before reaching the Texas coast, it went over that warm water in depth. That's where it is, and that's when these things totally explode again. The thing really intensified. It also, again, it cooled off the surface water temperatures, and we have that dust. Nothing going on in the tropics right now regarding tropical storms. Nothing at all. So we have a quiet period right now regarding that, but the heat dome, which last summer was primarily really concentrated over the southern Texas area, parts of Mexico, and it started off that way in the beginning of this summer. That's not normal. Right now, things are really closer to normal. The placement, the synoptic weather setup is something which is closer to normal. The temperatures are higher than normal, even record-breaking over many locations. But the weather synoptic setup is closer to normal. I wish everybody a wonderful day. Thank you for listening, and stay safe.